So uh, what can we do to actually, if we actually wanted to modify the color of this, um, of this flower, how would we go about doing that? Well, there are a couple of ways. One of the ways is, well, you might think that you could just go in here and, um, you know, create a new material, like, um, you know, maybe uh, just create a new uh, RS material builder. And then um, just say test material. We're not going to actually use this, but just to uh, kind of illustrate the point, we're going to create this test material and dive inside. And maybe we'll just set this to, uh, you know, we'll just use the default uh, standard material for now, just to see if we can get something working. Maybe just to prove that we're actually getting it to work, we'll change the color to something obnoxious like green. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll go here on this uh, instance object, the flower instances, and I'll just drop the test material on there and we'll render this now and see what happens. You can see that nothing happens because it's actually, it's just, it, it's still taking on the material that's built into the Redshift, uh, the Redshift proxy. So if we do want to modify the material of this object there, what we can do is actually modify the material that was assigned to it when we rendered it out. So if we look back, if we go back into where this material is created, we can see that we assign this flower material to our redshift object. So if we go out here and start modifying that material object, so let's, let's go and uh, grab the flower material that was assigned there. So we're going to jump inside this flower material and then maybe what we'll do is we'll just uh, do the same thing. Um, right here we'll throw down our standard material and here we will assign it to a color of green. And now if I wire this into the surface instead of this uh, other network we have that makes them orange, um, let's see what happens now. So if I click render you can say that you can see that it's still using that old um, the old the the original orange shader, but what we can do is actually um, check an option in here, and just to remove any confusion here, I'm going to get rid of this material that's um, been assigned up there. We don't need that right now. I'm going to go over to the Redshift Object tab, and you can see that we've got under the settings Redshift Object um, tab settings. Then there's an instancing tab right here. And you see we get a bunch of different options, and here is an option where we can say override instance file proxy materials from scene materials. So if we tick this, then what it's going to do is it's actually going to look to the scene material that has the same name as the material that was assigned right here. And it's going to use that material as it exists in the scene instead of the version of the material that was kind of saved inside of this archive when we created that Redshift proxy file. I'm just going to turn off the renderer and set this back to what it was before. And then let's turn the renderer back on. And you can see we have our access to our, you know, our regular um, shader here. Now, if we truly wanted to override this with a completely new shader that was, you know, say like our test material, we had some other material we created somewhere else and we really just need that to be assigned to this flower. We could go about it um, a couple of ways. What we could do is we could just um, stop the render. We could go to this material um, node that we created right here and we could drop our test material on there and re-render this to disk just by you know grabbing the redshift proxy output, rendering it to disk, and then firing off the render again. And that new material, this new test material, has been baked into it. So if I change this now, you can see that that new test material is being updated there um, as one of the ways that we could you know potentially put a different material on it. So you can bake a new material into the redshift proxy right here or you can actually revert to using uh, Houdini Redshift proxies. So let's actually just turn this back into the flower material. I'm gonna just go here and select the flower material, accept, and go down here and re-render this to disk. And just to prove to ourselves that that worked, this should be back to the Redshift, the normal uh, flower material. And then what we're gonna do is stop the render and go back over here to our instances and dive in here and instead of rendering the redshift proxy instances over here you know, we've got the render flag set here we're actually going to just set the render flag back to whatever the display flag is because redshift is capable of rendering houdini proxy files as well so we've got this um this .bgo.se instance file if i jump out here and we render it 
you'll see that nothing shows up. But if we go back to this instancing tab and we choose this instance file mode and we set that back to Houdini compatible objects, you can see those show up and they show up without really any shader assigned to them. Now we could go back and go up and go up to the uh, render tab on the object and go back and assign the flower material to them and that should all look normal. We assign the flower material and restart the render. And you can see that flower material is back. And from here, it, it, it will really behave quite a bit like what all the rest of material assigning uh, behaves like. You know, you can sign your, your test material object to it. You can just change materials however you like here. Now, I like using Redshift proxies because I'm a little, maybe a little superstitious and I feel that they perform better um, when you have particularly high, like large numbers of instances or high poly count instances. Um, so I tend to try to use redshift proxies whenever I can, but sometimes you got to adjust the look and you got to pull the parachute. So it's nice to know that it can also handle regular Houdini instances as well. So to alleviate any confusion, let's just get this back to where it was. Um, we were uh, using Let's uh, turn the renderer back on. We were using uh, Redshift proxy objects, so I'm gonna switch that back here. This turns off. Then we gotta jump inside here and switch where the render flag is. So I'm just gonna control click on the render right here and we get our flower material back. And then up here on the render, uh, we have this test material assigned. I'm gonna go back to making sure that the flower material is assigned here. And then um, we should be back in business because we have on the Redshift object tab override instance file proxy materials from scene uh, materials. We can jump into the flower here and start uh, dialing things around. Like if I were to um, just, if I were to bring the subsurface way down, you can see we're adjusting the subsurface and I could uh, maybe change what the color of the tips are. Um, if I go to maybe this, uh, ramp I can adjust it and you can see that it turns blue um, Towards the end of the flower and stuff like that. So we do still have full control over those attributes um, And everything it's gonna undo to set that back to where it was nice Is there subsurface let's turn that back up there we go Yeah, and so there we are and uh, yeah, I think that Yeah 